Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. The Young and the Restless Monday, October 7 Recap, Sharon's Daniel Trap, Chance's Lead and Kyle's Red Flag for Claire. The Young and the Restless, Y and R, Spoilers Recap for Monday, October 7, reveals that Sharon Newman, Sharon Case, will call out to Cameron Kirsten, Lyndon Ashby, for help but she'll decide she can handle this on her own when he doesn't appear. Sharon will text Daniel from Heather Stevens, Vale Bloom, number and pretend she wants to return the phone she just found. This ploy to get Daniel and Lucy Romilotti, Lily Brooks O'Brien, out of the penthouse will work since they'll want to meet and get the phone ASAP. I and R spoilers say that'll give Sharon a chance to sneak in Daniel's apartment, where she'll plant the bloody towel and Heather's phone in the cabinet. Once Sharon heads back home, Faith Newman, Raylan Castor, will express relief since she was worried about her mom being out so late. Sharon will downplay everything and advise Faith to hold off on reaching out to Lucy over Heather's demise. Later, Cameron will pop back up and praise Sharon for what a great job she did earlier. Now Cameron will suggest that Sharon has to alert the police to the evidence in Daniel's apartment without arousing suspicion. Cameron will feel like Daniel's going to get arrested and finally pay once Sharon takes this next step. At Crimson Lights, Nick Newman, Joshua Morrow, will warn Phyllis Summers, Michelle Stafford, and Summer Newman, Allison Lanier, to let Daniel and Lucy decide whether they want memorial service help. Nick also won't want Phyllis getting involved in the investigation. At the athletic club, Daniel will send Lucy upstairs to see if Summers there while he speaks with Chance Chancellor, Connor Floyd, alone. Chance will get updates on someone claiming they found Heather's phone and wanting to return it, but they'll be 15 minutes late. Since Chance will officially be back at the GCPD and personally handling this case, he'll advise Daniel to reply with another text and offer a reward. Chance will also get confirmation from Daniel that Heather's phone was password protected, so he'll wonder how someone was able to get on it and text Daniel. When Summer and Phyllis arrive to find Chance and Daniel with their heads together, they'll learn there may be a new lead. At Society, Audra Charles, Zalika Silver, will bicker with Kyle Abbott, Michael Mueller, over her firing. After Audra makes it clear that this isn't over, she'll summon Sally Spectra, Courtney Hope, and vent to her about what happened with Glissade. Audra will refuse to give up what she's worked so hard for and will give Sally a nudge to fight for her romance with Adam Newman, Mark Grossman too. Back at the coffee house, Kyle will cross paths with Claire Newman, Haley Aaron, and gloat about getting Audra booted out of the co-CEO spot. Although Kyle will take Claire to celebrate at the jazz lounge, she'll be weirded out by how gleeful he's being about all of this. Considering how Jordan, Colleen Zenk, Raised her, Claire will see a red flag when someone celebrates the misfortune of someone else. Kyle will assure Claire that it was a one-time deal to protect his future along with Harrison Abbott's, Redding Munsell, but she'll still seem uneasy. The young and the restless spoilers say Kyle and Claire may face more problems in their romance than they bargained for, so stick with us for more predictions on any tricky news ahead. The tension in Genoa City could be sliced with a knife on this chilly October day. While the golden hues of fall leaves danced on the breeze, the residents were caught in the whirlwind of secrets, betrayals, and simmering confrontations. The center of today's episode spun around three critical storylines, Sharon's clever plan to trap Daniel, Chance's new lead in his ongoing investigation, and Kyle's deepening suspicions that raised a major red flag concerning Claire. Sharon's Daniel Trap Sharon Newman had her back against the wall, but she was far from cornered. For weeks, she'd been working quietly, piecing together the puzzle of Daniel Romilotti's recent activities. He had been evasive, and the tension between him and the rest of the family had reached an all-time high. Sharon, though still reeling from the betrayals of the past, had learned to play the long game, and today it was time to make her move. At Crimson Lights, Sharon appeared calm and collected, though her mind was working at a feverish pace. She'd invited Daniel to meet her there under the guise of a friendly conversation about his daughter, Lucy. But what Daniel didn't know was that Sharon had much more on her agenda than a simple coffee date. When Daniel arrived, he appeared distant and preoccupied. He greeted Sharon but couldn't hide the guilt that weighed on him. 
Sharon noticed immediately, every flicker of his eyes, the way he rubbed the back of his neck nervously. This wasn't the carefree, confident Daniel she once knew. I'm glad you could make it, Sharon said, her voice warm but laced with an underlying firmness. We need to talk, Daniel raised an eyebrow. About Lucy, what's going on? Sharon took a deep breath, making sure her tone was measured. Partly. But also, I think it's time we talked about what's really going on with you, Daniel. You've been dodging questions, hiding things, we all feel it. Daniel fidgeted. I don't know what you mean. Sharon leaned in slightly, lowering her voice as if to pull him closer into her orbit. I know you've been meeting someone. I know that there's more going on than you're letting on. You need to come clean, for your own sake. Daniel's face paled, and for a moment he looked like a deer caught in the headlights, but just as quickly his expression hardened, you're wrong, there's nothing to tell. Sharon smiled, but it wasn't a smile of warmth. It was a knowing smile, one that made Daniel's stomach turn. I think you've forgotten who you're talking to. I've been down this road before. I know the signs, Daniel. I've set up some things, let's just say, a trap of sorts. All it takes is one slip from you, and everyone will know the truth. Daniel's eyes widened. He didn't say a word, but Sharon knew she'd struck a nerve. Her trap had been set, and now it was just a matter of time before Daniel made the wrong move. Chances lead. Meanwhile, across town at the GTAC, Chance Chancellor was hard at work chasing down a lead that could blow the lid off a massive case he'd been working on. The whispers of a secret money laundering scheme had been circulating for months, but every time he got close to a breakthrough, the trail went cold. But today, something had changed. A new source had reached out to him anonymously, offering him a lead that was too good to ignore. Chance sat at a corner table, his phone vibrating every few minutes as tips and updates came through. His contact had provided him with a name, Gerald Covington. The man was a ghost in the financial world, clean on paper, but rumors of dirty deals had followed him for years. As Chance sifted through the data on his laptop, his instincts screamed that this was the missing piece. If he could tie Covington to the laundering operation, it would not only solve the case, but it could implicate some very powerful people in Geno City, people who wouldn't take kindly to being exposed. Just as Chance was about to call his source back, his phone buzzed with a message from Abby. How's the investigation going? I've got something you might want to know. Dinner later. Chance smiled slightly. Abby always seemed to know when to check in, even in the middle of his most intense cases. He typed a quick reply and focused back on the files. But as he continued digging, a name caught his eye, Claire Sinclair. Kyle's red flag for Claire. Over at Jabut, Kyle Abbott was deep in his own troubling discoveries. The last few weeks had been a whirlwind for him, balancing his duties at the company with the emotional roller coaster of his personal life. But lately something about Claire Sinclair had been gnawing at him, and today his concerns had reached a boiling point. Claire had come into his life quickly, and though she presented herself as an ambitious and talented professional, Kyle couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. Her connections to certain key players in the corporate world had raised more than a few eyebrows, and Kyle wasn't one to ignore red flags. At the office, Kyle had just wrapped up a meeting when he noticed Claire whispering in the hallway with an unfamiliar man. His instincts kicked in, and he watched them from a distance, carefully observing their body language. The conversation looked intense. Claire's usually calm demeanor seemed agitated, and the man she was speaking with exuded an air of intimidation. After they parted ways, Kyle decided to follow Claire, but not in the literal sense. Instead, he started digging into her past, looking for anything that could explain her secretive behavior. What he found wasn't reassuring. As he clicked through various records, Kyle's suspicion deepened. Claire had a history that she hadn't disclosed, a string of short-lived business ventures that had all mysteriously gone under, leaving behind a trail of legal disputes. It seemed that wherever Claire went, trouble followed. The final straw came when Kyle discovered her connection to Gerald Covington, the same main chance was investigating. It was no coincidence that Claire had been hovering around Jabot, just as Covington's name started making waves. Kyle knew he had to confront her, but he also knew that this could unravel everything. The cliffhanger. As the episode drew to a close, 
Sharon sat back at crimson lights, satisfied that her trap for Daniel was in motion. Across town, Chance's investigation was heating up, and Kyle was left staring at his screen, the weight of what he'd uncovered about Claire sinking in. The air in Genoa City was thick with impending revelations, but the biggest question remained who would crack first.